What's going on everybody? Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. This machine brings a bunch of things to the table and looks like it takes a little bit from other machines here and there to make what is the Adventure 5M. And today I want to go over it a little bit more. I set up a big list of cons and pros. I do cons first because if you can get through the cons, usually the machine ends up being for you. So we'll see if you guys can get through the cons of this machine and make it down to the pros because both are kind of, well, there's a lot of both, let's just say. So I have been printing with this thing for a little bit over two weeks. I've also did a full unboxing video and first print setup should be popping up right over here. And by video, I mean, it was a live stream. So if you guys wanna check that out, that's all in the link popping up. So if you wanna see what it's like to get out of the box, what it comes with, what the first print was like, all that will be up there. Like I said, in this video, I kinda wanna just show you what this thing uh, was like uh, through the prints that I have done and all the tests that I did and what I have found in the time that I have had it. And maybe, well, we'll figure out if this thing is worth your time and your money. All right, let's just jump right in to the cons. To start this off, we're gonna turn the machine off and that'll bring us into the first con. Ah, oh, wow, that's so much quieter. I can now hear myself think. So if it's not obvious yet, the first con of this machine is that it has an extremely loud fan and I'm not quite sure why or, or how this was chosen for this machine because it is clearly aimed to be something that should be in you know next to you while you're working but there's no way this thing should be this loud sitting here uh, I think some of the solutions might be to you know remove the blower fan and put a regular fan on there that might quiet it down or better yet have that fan turn on when the machine needs it to be on because at least at the moment when that machine is on, that ridiculous blower for the drivers is on as well. And I just don't think that's necessary. I have a room full of machines that only turns those fans on when they, they are needed and not just any time. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, that's kind of my thing, especially because this machine runs Clipper, even though they don't seem to want to acknowledge that or even mention that anywhere, it does run Clipper. Uh, and uh, I know for a fact that both the uh, hot end fan and the MCU fan can be turned off there. So that's probably my biggest gripe with that machine is that it has a 4010 uh, blower that is always on in the back of the machine and it kind of just resonates and it has this noise that's just somewhat unpleasant for a machine that's sitting next to you. Now, if it's gonna be on a rack next to other machines that are printing, I doubt you're even gonna know that this is there. But if this is your only machine or you have a few machines and you have some traditional Ender 3 style machines, for example, this thing is going to be loud just sitting there. Not printing, that part is actually rather quiet, but the, the just the, the noise that it makes from that one single fan that could be off when idle, that's the number one con on this machine. Number two is the fact that it is running Clipper, but it's not open sourced or available anywhere. Uh, we can't remove or use our own front end like Fluid or Mainsail, um, which is kind of strange to me for some company that's essentially using an open source uh, product to release their machine to the public, but then that open source uh, product is not available as open source with their modifications onto it. As far as I understand, that might even be illegal in some cases. Uh, I'm not exactly 100% uh, an expert in this field, uh, but it needs to be brought into attention. Uh, for example, the Creality K1 and and K1 Max have been open source after the fact and they weren't essentially at first. And I have a feeling Flash Forge is just following their footsteps until they get called out. Well, here you go. We know this thing is running Clipper, but it's not open sourced anywhere and available to us, which is a total bummer because it would be better with the fluid interface because this thing, at least at the moment, is really locked down. And I'll go over uh, that. In the, in the cons as we go. So those are the two major ones. I think pretty much everything else on this is a little bit less uh, so of a problem because don't get me wrong and you know try to get through the list because this is a great machine otherwise, but let's keep going through the cons. Uh, so at the moment at least, uh, and I'm sure this could be fixed with an update, but you can only use the Wi-Fi on this machine through their own slicer, which 
is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, they do want to make an, an ecosystem, and I know for a fact FlashForge does this. Uh, I know they tried it with their sister company with VoxLab, but in my opinion, uh, those machines that were locked down were some of the worst machines that VoxLab made, and some of their best machines were all of the open source machines. So uh, for me personally, I'm the type of person that likes to tinker, that likes to have full control over their machines. If that's some, not something that, that bothers you at all, that's not going to be a problem. But if you wanted to use Orca Slice, for example, which they even provide uh, their own profiles for, which work really great in my opinion, you cannot use the Wi-Fi features of the machine with that because you can only use the Wi-Fi printing uh, with their own slicer. So if you wanted to use your own, let's say Cura or Orca, whichever slicer you prefer, Prusa slicer, whatever it might be, you would have to use uh, the USB uh, stick to use this basically like a traditional machine. Since it has Wi-Fi and it's one of these new machines, it would be amazing if you, the Wi-Fi could just be unlocked, essentially because Clipper kind of does it for you. So they purposefully lock that down. All right, let's keep going. The display attachment, you could see this in the live stream that I pointed to earlier when I was attaching this. There is a, a ribbon cable that's on the back of this display. And when you're putting this on, there's no actual mount. You're kind of just friction fitting it on there. It kind of makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. Obviously, once it's installed, it's all gravy, nothing is wrong here. But that attachment point, that ribbon cable, is just not very confidence inspiring. And it makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. In fact, I had to check a couple times if I was doing it right, if I kinked uh, you know, the fragile cable, whatever it might be. Not a problem once you do it, but that's just the thing. You know, you get this thing out of the box, you paid good money for it. And then that kind of thing just makes you feel kind of iffy about it. The next thing here is I actually had to turn down the speed, well, for two reasons, but I had to turn the speed down of this machine by about 100 in the slicer. The first one was the cover, and I'll go over the cover later. I actually think it's pretty brilliant, but the cover is held on with magnets, and admittedly, the bottom of them is not very strong, and it was going so fast, in some cases, the case was popping up, and that could cause uh, an issue where uh, it actually might catch on an, a sharp object when it's printing, something along those lines. But then also the quality uh, got actually much better uh, when I turned this down by about 100. The quality on the machine is really great and you'll see through the prints and through the pros of this machine, but I did have to turn it down to get there. And I kind of found it funny that the magnets were basically not strong enough for how fast this thing was printing. I guess that's a, a pro and a con all in itself there. Uh, it purges too much when doing a filament swap and it only doesn't extrude without doing uh, uh, a uh, retraction. So at the moment I have a piece of filament in here and the way you would remove a spool of filament is you essentially have to pull this, uh, which doesn't have a collet, which is actually quite nice because it doesn't end up ruining the PTFE tube. Uh, but you just cut the filament and it essentially just extrudes the rest uh, through the extruder, making a little pile. And then when you put the next one in, it extrudes some more. And it actually ends up with quite a bit of waste. If it just allowed us to get it a little bit hot, pull the filament out, put the new one in, you would literally be cutting that in half. And that's how majority of the printers are doing it. Uh, I even had the Chitty Tech with the cutter that they removed from their newer machine, but that kind of solved that as well. You cut it as low as possible, remove the non-molten uh, filament, which is what they're trying to avoid, by the way. They're trying to avoid you pulling molten filament through the gears, potentially causing clogs, especially for uh, the people that this is aimed for. You don't want to do that. So I understand why they did it. Uh, but if we were uh, allowed to at least pull some of this out at a slightly colder temperature, then you're definitely going to be saving a lot of the little pieces of filament. If you're going to be swapping a bunch, you're just going to have a lot of waste. And I kind of found that to be a little bit funky, especially because no other printers, at least that I've come across, do that kind of thing. All right, the next is, this is very typical, this problem that I'm gonna go over is very typical of the new Core XY machines. Almost all of them do it. Uh, they put the spool and the sensor on the back. And if you have a setup like mine right here, where the, the printer is on a table, I can go around this side, I can go around that side, it is not a problem whatsoever. However, if you're putting it on a rack like this, or a shelf like that's over here to my left here, well, you can't get to the back and you have to continuously rotate the machine around just so that you can get your filament in and out. And it is a major pain. 
uh, I would highly suggest some kind of remix or some kind of spool attachment off to the side so that you don't have to continuously rotate the machine. Uh, and like I said, that's not just the problem with this one. It seems like one manufacturer did it and the rest are kind of just following their footsteps, even the bad things that the manufacturer has done. So that is what it is. I would love to see this with a side mounted spool, especially because this machine is so compact and so decent looking, right? It would be nice to have the spool uh, on the back, even right here on, towards the front on the side would be significantly better. Just make it easier to use. All right, and the last one I got on here is the UI can be somewhat tricky to use at times. Uh, for example, it has this really tiny icon uh, to edit uh, once you're starting to print. Like if you wanted to alter the speed or the Z offset, whatever you might want to do while the machine is printing, to get to that UI is pretty tricky. Now with all custom interfaces, you're only gonna run into that once or twice before you learn how to use it so it doesn't become an issue. But because this is a non-standard display and non-standard UI, it does make it tricky to figure out. You literally have to look and find those things are like click around everywhere uh you know but that is what it is so there you go that's all the cons i had and um you know i tried to specifically point them out so that we can all benefit from this not just the company can make something better but we uh can uh you know figure out if this is for us with all of these machines coming into the market i think it's really important to figure out which one is for who and which one like some of these problems you could totally live with and never even bat an eye on them but some of these things you might only find out otherwise if you already bought it and it's in front of you and then you're going to end up wanting to return it which is more gas more delivery um you know more uh companies involved in just returning a package you know hopefully we can avoid all of that stuff and avoid all this e-waste that's happening uh all over with these things all right so if you could get through those cons which in my opinion technically aren't so bad i'm just pointing them out uh uh here we go with the pros. So let's get into those because there is actually quite a lot of really cool things to say about this machine. Let's get into it. All right, so into pros. Let me dump out this bag of uh, prints that I've been printing over the past week just so I can show you some of these. Huge mountain of prints. All right, so let's get into the list. All right, so the first things first, and this is a massive positive for this machine, is I call this really similar to when I just reviewed the Ender 3 V3 SE. Uh, video will be popping up up here because I do think the target market for both of these machines is the same. One just happens to be Cartesian, and this one happens to be Core XY. But it is a zero calibration, drag and drop and print machine. This is probably some of the closest levels to um, you know, printing on a 2D printer as it gets. You can find an STL file that you like anywhere, drag it into the slicer, just hit print. You'll find this machine on your network uh, through the little uh, display and you just hit print and it prints. As long as you selected the right uh, filament that you put into the machine, it seems to do a good job. And I have actually printed everything that I've printed on this machine so far doing just that. I didn't alter anything, literally a drag and drop and print experience. And I think that that's what this machine is all about. Now, I, I know there's a 5M Pro. Uh, there's a lot of people that uh, have gotten that machine and took a look at it. But at $400, I do think that this is something different to, uh, you know, this machine brings something different at that price point to the table and I thought it'd be important to cover and like I said I think the number one pro and this is probably its selling point that this is a drag and drop machine and I think a lot of the, the pros that I'm going to go over kind of have to do with it being really easy to operate uh, without any calibrations the next thing we got going on is it has a great PI sheet uh, and I do, in fact, like this PI sheet. It's really easy to uh, grab a hold of. I do like this handle here, uh, and I think more uh, companies should be making these. And it helps you avoid touching the surface and putting your uh, you know, oils from your fingers uh, onto the machine, or onto the surface, rather. It is double-sided, and I do prefer these textured build plates. Uh, also, on top of that, there are little alignment slots uh, that, that make it really, really easy for you to put this thing down. Down, uh, where it needs to go and align itself right away. The PI sheet, great addition to this machine for sure. 
Uh, it has a really easy belt tensioning. Now, this is important for Core XY in general, probably a little bit more important than a Cartesian machine to have these belts properly tensioned. And unlike a lot of other machines that are coming out in the same uh, or similar segment, the belts are so easy to, ten to uh, tension. There's two bolts on the back. You unscrew them, you tension the belts, you put them back on. Not something you're going to have to often do, but they make it easy and I think it goes along with the theme of this machine of just being really easy, no, no need for any kind of serious calibrations. It has a really impressive hot end shroud and I know there's lots of different ways to take a look at it, but I do really, really like this. I think it is probably one of the strongest things about this machine. It, it also provides really great cooling out of everything that I printed out of PLA, even some stuff like this uh, amazing dragon here. It just comes out absolutely perfect. And some of the things up here that require really great cooling come out just absolutely perfect. And I'll show it to you a little bit closer so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The other part that's really amazing is the uh, how easy it is to take apart. So if you were to have some kind of problem inside or have uh, you know a clog, hopefully you don't, but if you do, it does seem like this would be so, so easy to work on. There's no screws, there's no tools. It is completely toolless. In fact, it does the same thing with the nozzle. So all you have to do is just remove this magnetic cover right here, squeeze the two uh, components uh, on the side here and your entire nozzle comes out and it has this connector. So there's no wires, there's no nothing. There's nothing to do or figure out. You can just replace these uh, as a whole and they sell them all together uh, just like that on the website. It, it is literally just a matter of pushing up so that it clicks and well, we are back together. So, so easy, definitely unlike any other machine out there, very unique uh, for this Flash Forge machine and I love it. I have a feeling that I think other companies might even be copying this uh, going forward. It is that good in my opinion. Uh, it has adaptive purging setup, and the reason why I mention that uh, is because I think that's a really good idea. Uh, in fact, you know, if the machine always purged in the same exact spot over and over again uh, for a while, you are going to, you know, degrade that area uh, of your machine uh, of your uh, print surface. And this has adaptive purging, which means it, depending on the print, that's where it purges on the side. I think that's actually pretty clever, uh, and something that well, Clipper has. Uh, it has a really compact design, and I think I mentioned this before uh, when I was talking about other things here, but if I was to put a traditional um, Ender 3 style machine next to this, this takes up less space, even with the spool in the back, because the bed typically has to slide back and forth. Typically the screen is off to the side somewhere. This is a more compact, more practical design, and it just looks significantly better because of that. It prints super fast with super high quality. You can see that through some of these prints, um, especially things like this that have to stand up. It prints just absolutely great. There's very little to no ringing, no artifacts, nothing. It just needed nothing to print perfect PLA prints. And I think that this is really important for who this machine is for. It has a great responsive, bright display. Uh, that is definitely one of the other strong suits of this machine. I know it's definitely going to be competing with the P1P uh, by Bamboo Lab. And unlike that machine, this has a great uh, touch screen. It is really easy to use. There are some tricky things in the UI, but the screen itself is fantastic. Um, even just getting around to your prints and just doing a few of uh, the typical things that you would do every single day on this machine. Fantastic, no complaints there whatsoever. I just think it could use a few UI improvements like I mentioned in the cons. Otherwise, fantastic. Uh, going back to its compact build, it looks like I missed one on my sheet here. It is a very sturdy structure and build. For example, if you take that machine that I was talking about earlier, the Ender 3 V3 SE, uh, the base is plastic, the top is plastic. It has extrusions uh, that are pretty sturdy, but that machine you can kind of flex if you really wanted to for some reason. Whereas this thing being literally all metal except for the very bottom here, that's not gonna be a problem. Uh, this thing is definitely very robust. It is built very well. You can see all the screws. There's no hidden nonsense. It's metal, really good structure. Definitely like that about this machine for sure. 
it is actually at a really crazy price point at $399 for this machine. Now it's not enclosed, so you're not going to be able to be printing ABS on this thing or nylon, but uh, you, will, you will be doing PLA to the best of its ability. TPU is probably going to be fine. It's a direct drive. Uh, PTG I could see being really, really good on this machine as long as you protect the build surface with uh, some kind of a glue stick. I do think that for this price point, what you get is actually really, really great. I think they did a really good job pricing this machine and I do think that is fair. And if you can get through those cons and you like these pros, I think that $400 is is a pretty good price point for this machine, especially because just a year ago, you could barely get half of this stuff uh, in a you know traditional Ender 3 style machine for $400. So uh, that is what it is. Because of, of its structure and how flat it is on the sides, it would be somewhat simple to mostly enclose this machine. The tricky part is going to be having this at the top. Now, I didn't notice uh, in my brief search that you can buy one uh, from uh, uh, Flashforge, and I did ask them directly. They didn't really reply about that in itself, uh, uh, about being available. They said maybe later, but I can see you being able to enclose this machine so that you can print uh, some other materials easier. Now, the thing to watch out for is, like I said, with the five, uh, with the five and pro there is a dome to kind of give this uh you know some space but there's probably ways around that uh in different ways if you did want to enclose this yourself if you were so inclined i do think this is going to be mostly a pla tpu uh and uh petg machine though and finally the nozzle options and like i mentioned before the easy to remove nozzle is just next level you can go to the flashforge website and grab yourself uh, any variety of these nozzles even different sizes this one as you can see is a bi-metal design with a really nice heat sink i just i love the fact that everything is included here with no wires the connector is right there it is just a really really great design and probably one of the coolest things about this machine easily all right hey future fetter here i was just messing around with this machine i was going to put some filament through it and i turned on the screen just to see that there is an update to it and it has some interesting things on there so let me show it to you real quick all right so let's see what we got so we got uh, added protection for the mcu uh, can now automatically detect external camera. So that's nice. That's something we tested in the live stream, but it wasn't working. So you could plug in a USB camera and it would work right away. Change the readings writing method to the files. Okay, fix print crashing. All right, uh, translation text. Okay, uh, added five, a pause command. That's nice. Uh, M106, okay. Support stopping printing during print presentation. Okay, that's also good because you couldn't before. Uh, fix configuration saving errors. Turn off the PCB fan when idle. Number 10. Hey, that's the number one gripe I had with the machine. So that being off at idle is going to be a game changer for how you feel around this machine, considering how, how loud that fan is. So definitely make sure you're on this update. That's huge. 11, we got add the print completion status for slicing. Not sure what that's all about. Uh, add nozzle wiping before auto leveling. Okay, that's cool. I thought it kind of did that itself already, but that's nice. Even more accuracy is better. Never had a problem before, but okay. Cancel the default checking of leveling in the print preview interface. Okay, so all positive things. Is that the rest of it? Yes. Okay, but number 10 is the major one. I'm definitely gonna go ahead and do that update. Fantastic. That was a really quick installation as well, or at least the download. All right, so definitely be sure to make sure that this thing is up to, to date to get the best experience from the machine. And I'm going to go back to printing and enjoying it. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. With that, let's go to the conclusion. All right, so that's what this thing seems to be all about. A really solid structure, really well-built machine that prints really fast and super, super easy out of the box. So for that, I can definitely recommend this machine for somebody looking to spend around $400. And I can definitely recommend this machine if you are somebody that's new to the hobby, that doesn't necessarily want full control over their machine, that is looking for something like a drag and drop print experience. I think that this definitely provides it. Now, I don't know if they're ever going to have integration with some kind of app where you can literally one-click print 
uh, like, uh, you know, without even dragging or selecting any profiles in a slicer. Uh, I'm assuming they will at some point, depending on how the sales of this and the 5M Pro go. Because uh, I know some other manufacturers provide that type of thing. But at the moment, if I go on printables or whatever other uh, website you want to get an STL from, I literally drag that into the slicer. I select this machine and hit slice with PLA. It seems to do it all right. Uh, now, you're going to have to learn things like where to put supports or not have supports. Sure. Uh, but even outside of that, for things that don't need supports and are designed really well, like these really amazing dragons it does exceptionally well so in closing i do think that that is what this machine is for it has some brilliant designs like this uh, hot end here and the nozzles all of that i think is great the one thing i do want to note is the fact that the machine runs clipper and the fact that we don't have access to clipper in any way from the manufacturer in fact i asked them directly i'm like hey this thing is running clipper and if so you know, what are you guys going to do? Are you going to release this as open source? Are we going to have access to it? You know, can we install fluid mainsail? And they quite literally directly replied with no, they have no intention of releasing that, at least at the moment. So I know other manufacturers, like I said, like Creality K1 went through that at first when it came out, some other companies as well. And it's just unfortunate that that takes place because if you look at the licensing for Clipper, uh, if you were to use Clipper and release it, uh, with any kind of modifications, you have to provide that software to everyone to use because it is open source. So you're quite literally piggybacking off of someone else's hard work and selling a product. So I do have a problem with that, but I think that it's not too late to fix. Much like with the K series, like I keep mentioning, you can make it right to release that to everybody and give us the access to it so that we can enjoy the tools that we bought a little bit more. That's not important for some people, but for a lot of people, I know it is. So it's really important for me to mention it uh, because I do think that other companies are looking at releases like this and thinking that that's okay and that's what they are also going to do. And I don't think that that is a good uh, direction for this entire hobby for any of these businesses especially for someone like Flashforge that that's so well um, you know into uh, the hobby it's been around for so many years on so many different levels at both hobby grade professional grade uh, machines so you know if we make enough fuss about it maybe we can make a change and uh, you know hopefully uh, companies will go in the right direction so with that said, like I said, I think there's so, so much to like about this machine. I have some personal gripes about it, but that's kind of beside the point, you know? Now, if you guys wanted to see a little bit closer looks at all of these things, I did uh, go over most of them in the live stream that I pointed out earlier. Uh, I did take a look at pretty much everything on the machine, including the motherboard, things of that nature. So if you guys want those, that level of information, check out that live stream that we did. Other than that, I think that's all I have for today. As always, thank you very much to our, our Patreon members, everyone in the Discord, obviously the YouTube members as well. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying being patrons and members. As always, you guys can uh, definitely ask me questions directly. Don't forget about that little perk, uh, as well as getting to see all of these videos early. So thank you all uh, very much for the support. All right, I think that's all for me for today. As always, I'll see you all in the comments. Later.